I'm never gonna be able to say the word okay ever again. Ever. The Fault in Our Stars is directed by Josh Boone, written by Scott Newstatter and Michael H. Weber, and it's of course based on the hugely popular novel by John Green, and this movie stars Shailene Woodley, Ansel Elgort, uh, Laura Dern, and Nat Wolf. Now, The Fault in Our Stars is a romance story between two teenagers, uh, Hazel Grace Lancaster and Augustus Waters, but the thing that makes their romance story unique is the fact that Hazel has cancer, uh, her lungs don't work, she has to carry around like this oxygen tank all the time, and Augustus Waters is a survivor of cancer, and he lost his leg because of the cancer. That really is as much synopsis as I can give you at this point, because this movie isn't very, you know, focused on the plot, really. It really is about its central characters. Now, I personally have not read the book. Like, I own the book at Summer Upstairs, you know, but I re read through the first chapter, got kind of bored, honestly, and had to read something else for school, so I was never really that interested to, you know, read it again. However, because of this huge fan reaction, like, the Philippines was just... Uh, mentioned in time as the number one country obsessed with this book and because of this huge reaction I thought you know I'm gonna miss out on certain conversations if I don't watch this movie so I decided to watch it and I'm actually very pleasantly surprised uh, there are certain things in this movie that happen that I really don't agree with however for the most part like I was surprised to see that this is an enjoyable movie now again because I haven't read the book I can't say if this movie is faithful to the novel or not however I'd like to think it is, like it feels like it is faithful to the novel because, you know, like usually when you translate a book to film, like sometimes the director will want to add certain things like in the production design and, you know, all, just the visual aspect of it. But this movie is so focused on its script and its characters that it felt li it feels like this, the, the crew really just didn't want to add anything to obscure the main story. So one thing I was really impressed by with this movie is the fact that it does not romanticize cancer at all. But what's nice is they also don't ignore the cancer, you know, they don't romanticize it, but at the same time it doesn't just fall to the background and become like an inconsequential thing. Like it really is, you know, a part of the story, it factors into the story a lot, however they really choose not to focus on it. Like I said, this movie really is more about its characters, and let's, let's go straight to that because this movie really has two fantastic characters in the center. First of all, there's Hazel, and Hazel, she has a bit of a cynicism about her, well, you, you know, she can't help it because she has cancer, but what I like is that she still keeps looking forward, you know, like, she is still very strong and independent within, like, everything she cares about at this stage in her life is, you know, are my parents gonna be sad when I die, stuff like that, she doesn't want to hurt Gus, you know, when she eventually dies, like, someday. And while Hazel is a bit of a realist, on the other side, you have Augustus Waters, who is very much a romantic. Um, he's like the nicest guy ever, man. Like, this, this, this is the kind of guy, like, you just want to be best friends with. Because he's, like, super optimistic. He's always game for anything. But he doesn't come off as, like, a jerk or someone who steps over other people to get his way. He is, like, very respectful. He, like, he is, like, kind of, like, the perfect guy. However, we do see later on in the movie, he's not the perfect guy. Because, you know, he is very vulnerable. And I like the fact that, you know, he has vulnerable moments. But the best thing about these characters is when they're together in a scene because, you know, they do come from different, like, ideologies almost and it's nice to see that these ideas clash but, you know, eventually they still are able to have a relationship despite their differing worldviews. And I was really happy to see that the dialogue in this movie wasn't pretentious like I was expecting because from the first chapter of the book, like, I really thought, you know, the dialogue was just a bit too unrealistic but you know they make it work here because it does feel just very witty you know like these kids are very smart and they've been through a lot this is one of those movies that uses like really mundane conversations about seemingly you know useless things but you know through these conversations uh deeper things about the characters are revealed like when they talk about this book that hazel loves you get from you know the questions Hazel wants answered that she cares about certain things and same thing goes for Gus. And through all these conversations and all the witty dialogue, the romance surprisingly stays very very real to me. Now the best thing about this movie though surprisingly again to me is the acting because Shailene Woodley has been getting a lot of buzz for being like one of the best young actresses coming up and she really deserves it, you know, because her performance here as Hazel like, no matter what role she plays, she manages to infuse this sincerity to her character. What I love so much about her performance is that, you know, in the hands of another actress, I feel like Hazel could have just become this person that we just feel sorry for the entire time, but uh, Shailene Woodley really works so hard to make 
uh, Hazel, like this developed character that by the end of the movie we've gone beyond pitying her, you know, like that's an insult to the character if we just pity her. Instead, we really do respect her as a person, we appreciate her for being there, and she really is more than just her disease. Ansel Elgort, who plays uh, Augustus Waters, like he really pulls off the likable thing, you know, and what I, but what I like is that he breaks stereotype, you know, like he's not just this whatever jock or, you know, dream guy running around. What Ansel Elgort does with this role is that he grounds his character so much all the time. Like, even when he's doing something terribly romantic, like, you know, taking her, taking Hazel out on a date and stuff, he still has this, like, awkwardness about him. Like, you can still see the little boy playing video games, like, inside him. Everyone in this movie is good as an actress or actor, you know? Like, uh, Laura Dern, who plays Hazel's mom, is really good. Nat Wolf plays uh, their other friend who they meet at the cancer support group. There's a really nice cameo in this movie from a famous actor. I won't mention who it is, but, you know, he plays it really well. Josh Boone directs this movie, and he obviously has a lot of respect also for this material, as well as, you know, the actors do. Because, again, he focuses the story on the characters, really, like, not the cancer and stuff because again I feel like other directors might want to capitalize on the fact that you know tragedy brings in money because there are certain things like I mentioned uh, in this movie that I just didn't really like and I wasn't a fan of it for one I feel like this movie gets a bit aimless at certain points and this movie sometimes goes into certain scenes that I feel don't add to the characters at all you know it just feels like they're there for fan service kind of but the thing I really didn't agree with is the fact that I don't really like let's say the last 20 minutes of this movie, last 15 minutes, because it just gets really melodramatic. And this is a movie that spends its first few minutes rejecting those, you know, romance cliches, and then they suddenly just, like, dive headfirst into it at the last parts, in my opinion, at least. It's what I like to call the Forrest Gump ending, because, like, by the end of this movie, something, something momentous happens, and, you know, it allows for the actors to shine, showing certain emotions, it, sh it allows the director to squeeze emotion out of the audience, but when you look at it from a story, script, character perspective, it really doesn't add anything to the movie. It's completely pointless. Like, this thing that happens near the end, even if it didn't happen, I feel like the characters would be in, a, in exactly the same mindset. But other than that, don't hate me, I still feel like The Fault in Our Stars is a pretty good movie. I mean, it's very, very well acted, it's very well written, it's well directed. I think fans of the book will really like this movie. Um, it really is definitely better than other romance novels turned film because this has such respect for the characters and the material and knows that you know character first so it's a good step forward you know we're getting there in nicholas sparks you will have your day so that's my review of the fault in our stars have you guys seen it what do you think about it whether you loved it or you hated it whether you agree with me or not please leave me a comment and let's have a conversation